Okay, in this video, I am going to go over the, the methods of starting a nitro engine. Uh, and uh, some other things. The very first nitro engines were started simply by their small engines. Uh, anybody who has watched my earlier videos, uh, you should know now that they work off compression uh, and a glow plug. This is a glow plug. All it is is a uh, inside of it there is a filament that gets red hot, sort of like a light bulb, but uh, that's not how they stay red hot. They stay red hot from the combustion cycle. But you do have to, to start your engine, you have to use a type of electricity, which would be a uh, glow plug igniter. Uh, in the case of Traxxas, uh, their wand, and I know this is mangled, my dog got a hold of it, but it's a perfect thing to show, it has three wires. The yellow goes to... Uh, it grounds out to the uh, block of the motor and then the blue wire has a spring on the end of it which connects to the glow plug and then you press this little button and when it's spinning over the motor it is spinning it is also igniting the glow plug so now that we've gone over what's needed to start them the methods uh, the very early one, early uh, vehicles, airplanes, uh, had a propeller on it, and you simply spun it over by hand. And seeing that these don't need any spark or anything, all you had to do was put a glow plug igniter on it, spin it over by hand, and it started. Hopefully, usually, most of the time. Uh, very early versions had a carburetor, but did not even have any type of throttle. It would stay at whatever RPM level you would set it at, and then you would fly it. Uh, nowadays, we have carburetors, which you have the slide type and the rotary type. And I've gone over those. Okay, so first off is pull start. Personally, my favorite pull start, very lightweight, very simple. All you need is your car, glow plug igniter, transmitter, fuel, you're good. You can start. Uh, this works by, uh, you have a, you have your block and you have a one-way bearing on it. This bearing only lets, only spins one direction. And as you can see, I'm spinning it one way, but the other, when I spin the other direction, it doesn't go anywhere. These engines, when you're looking at the front of it, they rotate uh, counterclockwise. Uh, this one isn't hard to turn over because I don't have the head bolted down. Um, but this is what a one-way bearing looks like. There are some that uh, have just, like Traxxas just has two sides on it to hold it in place. But this would go over that one-way bearing. And then I would pull on this. And that's how this, this engine would start. Very simple. Um... After that, they came out with what's known as a starter box. A starter box has a rubber wheel that one to two brushed motors spin, and you have a on-off switch on the side right here, and with two batteries, or you can even uh, run it with an outside power source if you want. I don't know why you want to do that, but... With these, uh, they run on 12, between 12 and 14 volts. Uh, you can use nickel metal hydride, LiPo, or they have a specialty battery 
well not specially, but a battery specifically for these. They are a, a lead acid battery. You would need a good charger like this. This is a good but cheap charger. Does every type of RC battery out there from uh, nickel metal hydride, NICAD, uh, Life, LiPo, Li uh, Lilo, uh, Lilo, Lilon, uh, lead acid. It also has a battery meter built into it, uh, a battery uh, resistance. A battery resistance is one thing you always want to watch as like a lipo as it gets older if the resistance goes up i'm not going to get into specifics but look at rc physics and he really gets into the specifics of the lipo batteries and stuff like that i'm more of a nitro person but with a uh A starter box you take your vehicle you have to position the flywheel over the rubber wheel which would be right there you have to get it just right you would then take your glow plug starter um, igniter put it on there turn it on <laughs> how they work it's very similar to the all it does is connects the flywheel and spins the motor uh, very similar to uh, the way by doing it by hand uh, and then that was the very early ones and then I, I brought up the uh, pull start which every type from here on out you're gonna need a one-way bearing with these kinds Pull start, like I said, you put it on here. You pull the pull, take the pull start, put it on, and you give it you some yanks. Here's another pull start. Uh, you can actually see this one has a different shape inside of it. That's for a different shape uh, one way bearing. But these are bolted onto the back of the motors. Most one way bearings are a head like this, a six-sided, a hexagon, but Traxxas uses one that just has two flat spots. And this is for a 3.3 or 2.5. Uh, the only motor that I believe Traxxas uses a uh, hex is the Pro 0.15, their weakest motor. They're basically, if you want to get a nitro, their training motor. In my opinion, uh, the most user-friendly engines, HPI, uh, OS, Navarosi, LRP, things like that, Traxxas motors, notoriously hard to tune, pain in the ass, uh, the carburetor is plastic, just no good, a lot of, a lot of problems. Um, but then with uh, Traxxas, there's also a different type of starter for these. And it is known as the Traxxas Easy Start. It uses an electric motor. This is actually for the Pro 0.15, but I have it on a 2.5. It goes on like this. This is very good for people that are new to the hobby. Uh, for two very good reasons. You have this little wand. This is what this one has on it. This is a Traxxas T-Max. I like using the easy start for the break-in procedure. Especially with a T-Max because you cannot get to the, uh, the motor, the, uh, shit. You cannot get to the flywheel from underneath, and even from the top, it's very difficult to get to it. Especially after you're running it, you need to get it to bottom dead center. Like I just ran this one, and now I need to spin it over to make sure that piston is at bottom dead center. And I will explain that in one second. The reason you want your motor at bottom dead center after you use it, and I have 
a piston and a this is a sleeve you have ABC construction a aluminum the uh, piston is aluminum B brass the uh, liner the sleeve is brass C chrome the inside of the brass is chrome plated Um, so basically with these, anybody, like I, I think I brought up earlier, these work off compression and a glow plug. If you can push your piston all the way through and it come out the other side, you've lost compression. This one is actually hard to pull out once I get it up to the top. So this one has actually got some life on it, even though it's had about five gallons put through it. Uh, bottom dead center the reason you want to do that is top dead center is when it's up here bottom dead center is when it's down here at the top is where what's known as the pinch is where the compression takes place the most and where uh, combustion happens um, if you leave after you run it if you leave it at the top the brass is going to contract faster and more than the aluminum is. Aluminum doesn't expand and contract as much as brass does. So this brass is going to want to contract, but if you leave it all the way up at the top, which is known as top dead center, um, I wish I had the back of a motor that I could show that I don't have the plate off one. Basically, with the uh, piston at the very top, and there's a little pin. So if you're looking at this, you have the crankshaft. Uh, I actually think I have one right here. I have a lot of extra parts because you never know what you're going to need when you're going to need. Yeah, here's a crankshaft. Uh, so basically you want it to be like that because you see you have this little pin right here you want it to be at the bottom if it's up at the top like that if we're looking at the end the back of an engine this is where the back plate would be you want that pin to be at the bottom because that would have the piston at the bottom of its travel and now quickly I'm going to show something that I wanted to show in a past video, my, my long video, but I wasn't able to do it. I'm trying to find my flashlight, my right, the flashlight I need for this. Uh, if I can't find it quickly, I'll just, yeah, I'll just go with what I have in my hand. Looking inside this, you can see that there are grooves down inside that motor. You have one there, the back, that's your uh, exhaust port, then you have another groove right there, then you have another groove at the front. The front is known as the uh, boost port. All along this you have holes. Um, this one right here is the exhaust. This is the boost port. The boost port is what helps get a lot of new air and fuel in and uh, get the old air and fuel out. Two strokes with like a, a gasoline two stroke actually has a carb on one side of the head and a uh, the exhaust on the other. In order to have it to operate like a nitro motor, you would need what is called a reed case motor. That's where, just like a nitro, the fuel comes down into the combustion chamber and then comes up from the bottom instead of coming in from the side more power, better combustion, 
bunch of different things, better efficiency, but we're not really worried about that with uh, our RCs. We want power. We don't give a damn about what it does. Uh, I mean, of course, we want better fuel efficiency so we can run longer and not have to spend, I mean, uh, usually a gallon of nitromethane, you're looking at uh, $30. Uh, quickly, uh, nitromethane is very similar to uh, nitrous oxide. And you hear that nitro part. Uh, when nitromethane burns, it creates its own oxygen. So that's why you have different percentages of nitromethane. If you have a 33% nitromethane compared to 20%, there's going to be more power because you're adding more oxygen to the mix. And you're also going to have to make the carburetor allow more fuel to go in because more methane is going to be needed. I mean, not methane, methanol, because like in the previous videos, we discussed this. Uh, you have, it is a mixture of nitromethane, methanol, and an oil blend. So if it's 33%, you're going to have 13% more oxygen, so you're going to need 13% more air. With nitrous oxide, which they are starting to, here's the flashlight I needed, huh? Uh, with nitrous oxide, which they're actually starting to come out with kits for, uh, uh, for RC vehicles, as crazy as it sounds, uh, I don't think it's very smart, but basically with, uh, all nitrous oxide does, a lot of people think it adds extra things, all it does is add extra when nitrous oxide i mean yeah when nitrous oxide burns it turns into oxygen that means you can put more fuel in the cylinder it's sort of a cheap poor man's turbocharger or supercharger a turbo and a supercharger actually forces more air in nitro uh, uh, nitrous oxide uh, through chemical reaction of uh, thermal dynamics, not thermal dynamics, uh, by a thermal explosion, when it gets hot and burns, oxygen is created, so more gas can be burnt. More power. You get more gas in there, you get more power. But if you don't add more fuel, you're going to run lean. And as we know with nitrous... Uh, with uh, nitro motors, the leaner you run, the hotter it's going to get. So, that's that. But after these kind of starters, now we're getting back to start uh, the way to start them. After pull starts, a starter box, um, uh, there's what's known as Roto Start, Tiger Drive, and Trax Easy Start. I do not have Tiger Drive. I do not have Roto Start. I do not like it, and I will get to that in a second. It's good for n new people, noobs. Uh, but personally, I prefer if you're new. I prefer this over the other two because it has everything in one spot. Uh, it is uh, the Traxxas Easy Start. You just have a motor. That spins. You have an electric motor, just like on a regular car, that spins the uh, nit the nitro motor over, which will uh, start it. And you have this wand that goes into a little keyway where there's four little prongs, and two of the wires go to a brushed motor, which has gearing a gearing reduction system. So, of course, yeah, you have a motor that's going to want to spend 10,000 RPM. It's not, you're going to want to reduce that and not get the, you're going to want to get the torque out of the motor. And it still spins quite quickly. You can hear them. Uh, I don't know if I have a wand with a battery in it right next to me. Let's see if I can, I think I have one right over here. Yep. But you take this and you just put it in place and you just press a button. 
that was a nitro motor spinning over, a TR, uh, TRX 3.3. The one thing that's really nice about these is if you have a glow plug igniter and it doesn't have a voltage meter on the top, um, if you put it on and it doesn't want to start, you don't know if it's a glow plug, you don't know what it is, so you're going to have to take the glow plug out and put it in and make sure it's hot. And it works like this, and it's glowing red. So, I mean, some of them get white hot, but if it gets hot, your glow plug's okay. But if you have a voltage meter and you know it's charged, if no voltage is shown, that means that you have no, uh, there is no circuit. So the glow plug is bad, the filament has broken, and you need to replace the glow plug. With this, if you press the button and the little green light, the little green LED that has glow plug next to it, if it doesn't come on, that means there is, it, it is an open circuit. It is not closed. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it is, uh, you have a bad glow plug. If this wire that connects to the glow plug is off, it won't work. Uh, if the yellow wire, which grounds to, usually it's put right here where the uh, screws go to hold the engine in place so you have a nice tight, but if one of those, I actually haven't had it happen to me with this, this is my very first RC vehicle. Um, Basically, uh, it comes undone, so you have an open circuit, so the glow plug isn't going to light up. Um, and now I'm going to show pictures of the HPI Rotostar and the Tiger Drive and explain how they work. First, Rotostar. This is HPI's Rotostar. You have something that's very similar to a drill, but it only spins one direction. And I've heard for like the uh, K5.9, which is a very large nitro motor that comes on the uh, HPI Savage XL. It's a monster truck. Uh, it doesn't have enough power, but I've also heard that uh, they've remedied that situation by putting a more powerful motor in it. But you have this shaft right here that couples to this gear which is engaged into this gear which all of this goes on yet again onto the back of the motor and the back of the nitro motor the back plate and it turns the motor over for you instead of having to pull on it or have a see a starter box this one right here is the duratrax universal starter box starter boxes range from I saw one on Helipal for $19.95, but they wanted like $35 shipping. I was like, no, hell no. You can get this one on Amazon for Amazon Prime for $50. Uh, so that's why I got this one. I'm a racer. It was great to have because I can use it for my on-road. I can use it for my slayers, uh, my buggies. But basically, you just have... You have to take that shaft and at the back plate you have to put it through all these little spots and press the button and it'll turn the motor over and start it for you. But like with that one you're going to need a, a glow igniter. Same thing with Tiger tr Drive. The Tiger Drive is very similar except the gearing is set up differently. This is Tiger Drive. Instead of having uh, two gears that are side by side, you have a pinion and a crown gear. And this one, you actually go to the side of the vehicle, which would be e which is easier because you don't have to go through all the suspension parts. And again, you have the one-way bearing in the very center, and it goes onto the starter shaft on the back, and that's how 
the engine is rotated and start. It starts. So those are the ways that you start an RC vehicle. The uh, you will see different versions of each one of these, like the Traxxas Easy Start. Losi has a version of the Easy Start. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm almost positive I've seen it before. Um, other companies have, uh, but most companies like Ofna, which does isn't even around anymore. Uh, Losi. Uh, like low C8 Nitro, any type of buggy, you're going to want a starter box because you have that flat plate where there's a little channel, a little uh, slot cut out for the uh, flywheel and that rubber wheel connects to the flywheel and spins over the motor. Personally, my favorite because, yeah, you have to carry this whole thing, but I only use it to start the vehicle initially. The initial starting is sometimes the hardest because you got to get the car started and get it running, get it up to temperature. But once it's up to temperature, uh, the compression isn't as high. So if it dies, all you got to do is put your igniter on there, give it a quick yank on the pull start, and you're going again. Instead of having to pick up the car, take it all the way back to the starter box or bring the starter back box to the car, put it on, do all that, you can just give it a good yank. That's why with my race vehicles, uh, I always have a pull start just in case it does stall for some reason or I run out of fuel. Instead of having to bring it all the way back to my pit box, on well, my pit, and uh, and put fuel in it and do all that I can run I can have my buddy the person helping me uh, shoot some fuel in it with the fast refuel gun uh, hit it with the glow plug igniter and give it a tug after you prime it which not hard to do if you know exactly what you're doing especially with the HPI you have uh, with mine I always run uh, a inline filter and a primer bowl uh, like you can see with this one right here there's a filter after the uh, between the fuel tank and the carburetor just in case something gets into the fuel tank from maybe the exhaust because fuel pressure with nitros are created by the exhausts coming from this that's why you have a tube going from the exhaust tank to the top of the uh, of the fuel tank, and same thing with pretty much all of them. well, no, all nitros. Uh, Two-stroke gasoline. The carburetor actually has a little baffle that pumps the fuel from the uh, tank up to the carburetor. So the carburetor actually does it, and the sonic pulses that the uh, engine makes does it so that basically goes over all the ways of how an RC vehicle can be started so like usual got any questions comments uh, hit me. I I have a lot of I have pretty much once a day someone asks me a question and I haven't steered anyone wrong yet. Uh, I had some people uh, on YouTube call me out because of one of my videos. Well, I was able to prove them wrong and a lot of people actually sided with me. It was uh, one of my tuning videos, which is now gone. I have more experience now, and so I'm, I'm doing it from the very beginning to the very end. The easiest stuff to the hardest stuff. So that's basically it with this. Uh, be more videos coming. So, like usual, I gotta get up and shut the camera off myself. Doing this myself. Until next time, like usual, peace.